Devin Pike with the Dallas International Film Festival. A phenomenal block of documentary shorts here at the festival this year. Um, I love Strike. I love the, the 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 notion of it because it's every every passion, every sport has one of those fish tails where you can't. It's the one you caught. It's the one that got away. Mike Mooney joins us. He's the producer and the writer of the original story from which Strike, the greatest bowling story ever told, uh, stems from. Thanks for bringing this short to the festival and thanks for coming to Dallas, man. Oh yeah, thank you for having us. This is great. <clears throat> When you first heard the tale of of the game, um, where were you? What was your reaction to it? Uh, I had heard uh, something similar. I'd heard vague notions of a of a newspaper story about a guy who who had an incredible night of bowling, uh, and that's basically what I'd heard. And started doing research and realized that he'd had this. Uh, I mean, I guess we can have. Are we spoiling? It's a it's a short documentary. Are we gonna have any spoilers? Sure, I don't know sure. Yeah, that he that he came one pin away from a perfect series, uh, with in league bowling, which is like the most difficult thing you can do in bowling. Um, and uh, when I contacted him and had him start telling me the story, he thought I was making fun of him. He thought I was teasing him because in his mind this had been this horrible event where he had come so close to perfection and then missed. Whereas everybody around him, including myself, I thought it was just you know. Poetic. It was. It was unbelievable. When you're when you when you're when you're crafting the story and you're looking at it as something you wanted to do as a film. Obviously, there wasn't a lot of footage from it because it's certainly no one's going to start filming every single bowling they, game they ever um, they ever throw just to tr- you know hope to catch right. a perfect game, let alone three in a row. So, how did you approach the the telling of the story from that aspect? Yeah, the director Joey Dowd uh, was incredible. He uh, contacted everybody who was there that night uh, and sat them down and had them all retell the story uh, kind of moment by moment. And uh, it really creates this kind of tension uh, that even knowing what happens, it's, you know, it creates people gasping in the theaters. Talk a little bit about the person who threw the game. I, he had, he, he a, a, a semi, I don't know if, if it's right to say a professional bowler, because then you think of the, the professional bowler tour or the rest of it, but just an average Joe, somebody who just had lightning over and over and over again. Yeah, his name is Bill Fong. He is from Plano. Uh, he grew up in Chicago, uh, and he has dedicated his life to bowling. Uh, he, he bowls five, six nights a week, uh, 20, 25 games, um, and his entire he has memorized every lane in the entire bowling alley, 48 lanes, and he knows the divots, the, the bends in the wood. Uh, he is a person who has, yeah, he, he thinks about bowling every second of his, uh, of his life. When you're talking to him, when you're writing a story out originally, what was going through your head as, as far as your, your perception of Bill? Um, he was a, a character out of fiction, right? He was somebody who almost everything out of his mouth is entertaining. It's funny, sometimes intentionally, sometimes accidentally. Um, and so as a writer, he's the, the kind of person I'm looking for in every story. You know, he's, he's great. As he's approaching, and, and again, not to spoil it, and I, 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 I almost don't want to tell. It's a short, it's a short documentary. But it's, a, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a short. Not only did he come within one pen of a 900, it was the very last frame, the very last throw. The last pin. The last, was it the seven or the 10? The 10. It was the 10. As he's telling that story to you and then retelling it for the cameras, what's flashing on his face? Can you just see something in the back of his head, just a, a pang of like a sharp knife in, the, in his back at that point? Bill would do anything in the entire world to get that pin down. Uh, I think a lot of people who were there that night would do a lot just to be able to push that pin over for him. Uh, he he really believes his entire life would be completely different if that one pin had gone down. When people are talking about the game, they I mean the the, the funny thing in, in the in the short is there's there's a look of just dazed amazement on their faces as they're recounting it. Um, was, was was there one account that stuck stuck out in your head when you're when you guys were filming the the, the various um, bystanders for the game? Uh, his teammates, all of all three of his teammates that were there that night, uh, are, were, are were so captivated by this moment, and they don't see it the way Bill does. They don't see it as a uh, as this terrible thing that happened to him. They see it as this amazing moment, this you know historic uh, human. 
uh, incredible thing that, that he was able to accomplish that was made in some ways even more incredible by the fact that the last pin didn't go down. It, it makes it, uh, you know, uh, in some ways bittersweet, but more memorable in, in, in some way. What are you looking at as the future for the for the short? Because I know that there's there are a lot of different avenues for sports films and sports shorts to be able to to get out into the wild. What are you looking at as the future for? Uh, Joey is talking to a lot of different people about it. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm allowed to say, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, there's going to be some future for it. Let's the reason I bring it up is because um, I, I guess about a month and a half ago, Grantland had a had a great short about the perfect putt putt game. That's right. Which is not even. Uh, it's not windmills and clown mouths. It's eighteen really hard uh, holes, and that was going through my head as I, you know, after I after I had heard about the story of Strike, let alone seeing it. So I, I'm I'm really hopeful that people can get a chance to see it and just the look on Bill's face as he's recounting the game. It's tense, yeah. It's it, it, it's a phenomenal short and a great job for you guys on being able to bring the story to film in in a way that probably you know people wouldn't even realize if they're just a hack bowler you know ah 120 130 that's a good game for me just to see somebody who's that passionate about the game be able to come that close thanks yeah we wanted to uh, we wanted to have a story that people were going to relate to whether they're bowlers or they've never been bowling ever right it's a it's a person story it's a human story uh, and that's that's really what we wanted to convey you can find out more about Strike, the greatest bullying story ever told, not only at DallasFilm.org. Is there a website that you guys have created for the film as well? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah. We can get that taken care of for you. DallasFilm.org has all the information on all the films here at the festival as well as our alumni films as well. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mike. Thank you a lot for coming in. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.